So yesterday, somewhat unexpectedly, Apple announced a new lineup of M2 devices, more specifically a new M2 MacBook Pro and M2 Mac Mini. And spoiler alert, I'm way more excited about the new Mac Mini than I am about the new MacBooks. Let me explain, let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So like I said in the intro, Apple decided to semi-surprise us with a miniature event slash press release yesterday, announcing their newest M2 Max. I say semi-surprised because rumors of a press release had been surfacing a couple of days prior, including by our friend Mark Gurman. And as we know by now, he's right more often than he's wrong. And in this case, he was definitely right. We knew Apple was planning to launch new Macs, but we didn't expect this to happen until the end of Q3, aka March. Anyway, here we are with some brand new M2 Macs, and boy are they impressive. And I can hear you think, well, if they're so impressive, why then are you not interested in getting the new M2 MacBook Pro for yourself? Well, first let's have a look at all the M2 goodness that is coming our way, and then I'll explain why getting the M2 MacBook Pro doesn't make sense to me, but the M2 Mac Mini does. Now let me just take a second to appreciate Apple Silicon. The jump in performance between my specced out 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro and my 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro has been nothing but absolutely mind blowing. It is just leaps faster and it handles everything so much better and with so much more ease. And it's hard to deny that M1 really has revolutionized computing. Now I know not everyone is a content creator and most of you probably don't care about video editing, but it is my frame of reference and it really illustrates how well a machine performs. My Intel machine, and bear in mind that this was the specced out hyper expensive 16 inch MacBook Pro, would barely manage my 4K workflows. And when it did, it would sound like a rocket ship taking off and it would run very, very hot. My M1 Max MacBook Pro, which was a little bit cheaper by the way, runs those processes like it's nothing. The fans almost never kick on and it doesn't get nearly as hot as the Intel machines used to do. Not to mention the insane battery life. So with that said, we can only imagine how much better these M2 machines are going to perform. The new MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip will render animations 20% faster than an M1 can. Apple also tells us that it's 80% faster than the fastest Intel MacBook Pro. Now, you won't be hearing me talk about Intel machines after this, because let's just be honest, Apple Silicon is just an entirely different league. Compiling tons of code is supposedly going to be 25% faster than it is on the M1 machines, and image processing in apps like Photoshop will be 40% faster than the M1 Pro. And if you're a photographer, those are some serious numbers. And if that wasn't enough, Apple threw in a new M2 Max chip, combining the performance of the M2 Pro CPU with an even more powerful GPU. The M2 Max chip has 67 billion transistors, which apparently is 10 billion more transistors than the M1 Max chip. It has twice the memory interface of the M2 Pro, giving it 400 gigabytes per second unified memory bandwidth, supporting up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory. And that is absolutely insane. The M2 Max has a 12 core CPU and a 38 core GPU, which should result in 20 and 30% better performance respectively. And with that powerful neural engine and the new media engine with twice the ProRes support, this thing is an absolute beast and a half. And that makes it even more impressive that Apple managed to preserve a 22 hour battery life, making it the longest battery life on a Mac ever. I love how Apple chose to fire some cheeky shots at Windows when they stress that these Macs will deliver the same performance whether they're plugged in into a power source or not. The only thing that is a little surprising is that Apple is still using the five nanometer technology when a lot of us were quietly hoping for the superior three nanometer technology by now. Now that could lead to some performance issues like thermal throttling, but I guess time will tell. It also supports Wi-Fi 6E, which is nice if you live in an area where this is even an option. And the improved HDMI supports up to two 8K displays, which is also nice if you have a bucket of money to spare to purchase two 8K displays. Anyway, kidding aside, literally nobody can deny that this is one amazingly impressive machine, but I'm not getting one. 
And the reason for that is very simple. I told you how impressed I am with my 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and how that literally flies through all of my workflows. Now, the fact that something even better and even faster is on the horizon doesn't mean that my current machine is any less impressive. It will be just as good and just as fast as it was before the M2 Max was presented. And for me personally, there's not a single reason to upgrade. And when you watch Apple's presentation, it becomes pretty clear who these insane upgrades might benefit. Apple shows that M2 Max lets you color grade 8K video in DaVinci Resolve with ease, 30% faster than the M1 can. 3D artists will benefit from the improved effects rendering in Cinema 4D, which again is 30% faster than the M1. And the fact that you can now upgrade this machine up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory means that massive scenes can be created. Now, I'm an online creator and not a Hollywood editor. I felt that I needed the M1 Max because I do like to work with multiple 4K video streams and multi-cam setups, as you can see, and that requires a lot of processing power. Power, something the Intel machines were not always capable of handling. But my M1 Max is, so no need for an M2 Pro Max for me. Now, the other computer presented at the event was the new M2 Mac Mini, and that is interesting to me. I do all of my work on my 14-inch MacBook Pro, whether I'm traveling or at the studio, where it stays docked and hooked up to my studio display pretty much 99% of the time. But there are also times where I need a computer for podcasting and streaming, and even for some music production every now and then. And I've always been unplugging my MacBook Pro and taking it to whatever desk I need it at. And especially for streaming, this has been a pain in the neck because I have to hook up the cameras, hook up the audio, my A10 Mini Pro right here, every time I want to do that. So I've been looking into getting a dedicated machine for that purpose for quite a while now. And the Mac Mini has always come to the top of my list when I was looking for those things. But at first, I didn't want to get an Intel one because I'm so used to Apple Silicon now. And then I considered the M1 Mac Mini, but I never pulled the trigger and ended up waiting so long that it made more sense to wait for an updated model. Well, that day has now come, and I really believe that this is the time for me to finally pull that trigger. The pricing on these new Mac Minis is excellent, starting at $599, which in my opinion is an absolute steal for what you're getting. The very base model has the M2 chip, 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, and 256 gigabytes of storage, all of which can be upgraded, of course. Now, when I was looking into which one of the M2 Mac Minis to order, I noticed that I was quickly falling for the Apple trap. By the time I was done configuring my machine, I ended up well over 3,000 euros. I'm based in Belgium. And I realized I just configured something that could replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro. And while that would be nice to have, that's absolutely not what I need, especially not for the use cases I have in mind. I do want to hang on to that mini for a couple of years at least. So what I decided to do is to go for the M2 Pro chip, but to get the very base model. The what you see is what you get machine. And to be quite honest with you guys, I can't wait to see how that stacks up against my theoretically more powerful M1 Max MacBook Pro. Obviously, I'll be creating a lot of content about these machines and how they perform, so keep an eye out for that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, now is a good time to go clickety-click. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does make a difference. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.